In this episode, we're going to look at how we can use our new multi-domain setup to load different data on a per-domain basis. We'll look at the About page and extend that into the Article and Gallery pages in future lessons. We're going to start where we left off in the last episode. If you need to catch up, get checkout Domain Scope. So we just set up a new top-level domain to replace localhost using DNS mask in the etc host file. If you wonder if DNS mask is running, try psox and pipe that into the grep DNS mask command. This will show you the process that's running DNS mask. Otherwise, it'll only show you grep DNS mask. If you need to start DNS mask, do a sudo brew services start DNS mask. Okay, so since I have mine running, I'm going to do an npm run dev. Link local is working just fine. Zelda local is working fine too. But they both show the same information on the about page. So in order to change that, let's go into render.js. If you recall in the static router, we passed the context, but we left it empty. So we're going to use this context to pass information into our route components. So let's replace this with context and define that up here. Const context equals. Now we want to set up a site variable that will be different for each different domain. So we can say site and then we're going to get that off the request object. I'm not really sure which object on the request object they keep the host name. So let's set up a debugger. Go into our node debugger and reload the page. All right, we can see all of our variables right here. We have the request variable. So now in our console, we can type request host name, and we can see that we have link local. Okay, so that's cool. We don't need the local though, so let's take that out. Let's split it on the period. So now we have an array with link and local. So we'll just grab the first element of that array, and that'll be link. So request host name split, and then the first element of that array. We'll copy that and put it right there. So now we're going to pass in link to site, and that'll be available on our static context. Cool. So now we're ready to move on to the router. So we're going to start with our about component. Right now the route renders the universal component about. What we want to do is we want to pass the static context to this universal component. To do that, we're going to need to use the render method on the route. So we add render, and we create a new function inside that render. We also remove the end tag from route. So now we can take our universal component and return that universal component. So this is the exact same thing as what we did before. And you can see it updates and it's fine. But now we have access to these arguments. The router is going to pass in an object of arguments. All we want is the static context. Now it comes out as static context, even though you passed it in as context. A bit of a gotcha, just letting you know. So now we want to use this static context. But static context is only available during the server-side render. It's not available in the client render, but both client and server use the routes JS file. So in order to solve this, we have to create a bit of code to smooth out this difference. So let's create a new variable, site, and we're going to say if static context exists, then use static context site. If it doesn't exist, let's grab it off the location global in the browser. Just like on the request object, we have a host name. We can split it using a period and then grab the first element. So it'll be the same as the static context. Finally, we want to pass that to our universal component as a prop. All right, now we're ready to affect the about.js file in source components about.js. But we're going to use that props.site to pull in data dynamically. So let's take this markdown data and image path and put it down here in the render. Now, instead of going to data posts, we're going to pull in something new, site config, and let's require data props site site config.js now the js is optional we're not grabbing our props so we have an error let's put the props in there All right we also have to convert this into a normal function that has a return all right so now when we save that when we reload we get another error this one's a good one. So it said can't find module link site config. So that shows us that prop site is coming through. If we change this to Zelda, it'll say can't find module Zelda slash config. Well, there's a good reason for that. We haven't created them yet. So back in our terminal, let's exit out of the server. Let's create some files. Let's cd into data and let's make a couple of directories. Link and Zelda. 
Now inside data, we have bio and we have post. We're going to want to copy these and put them into link in Zelda. So we'll do copy bio.js. We'll put that into link and call it site config. And we'll do the same thing for Zelda. So now we want to copy the post. And we'll call it link slash bio. So this is going to be a post for the about page. Finally, let's move post into Zelda. And let's remove bio.js since we already have the site config set up. All right, so now our data looks very different. It's a little more organized. We have a bio and a site config for both of our domains. All right, so let's npm run dev, go back to our browser, and now it can't find our old post. That's fine. We're gonna change this markdown right now. So let's take image path and put it up here. We'll take our markdown data. Instead of a plain string, let's use the back ticks. And we can do props site in here as well. So now it's going to point at the proper directory. We just need to change this to bio. So now that's saved. Go back in and it's back to normal. We have our posts and our bio. Cool, but this is in Zelda still. Well, let's create some Zelda specific data. So first thing we can do is we can create a new image to set this apart from the link one. Let's make this link and this Zelda. All right, so let's get a new image for Zelda. Let's go back to terminal. We'll cd into source. Now let's get an image for what we want this bio page to look like. I'm gonna use this image right here. It comes from the Webpack course. So let's back out of images, back into our root. Instead of source images, we have a new Zelda image. Cool. So now in image path, what do you think we need to do? We only have one piece of information to scope. Can we use props.site here? Hmm, I mean we could. The difference is that Zelda is a PNG image and Link is a JPEG. But we don't need to scope everything on props.site since now we have site config coming in. So we can use site config to set up our image. So let's go into data link site config. So right now we have a simple sentence. Let's create an object. And inside this object, let's give it one property. We'll call about image. And since this is link, we'll say link.jpg. Cool. Now let's do the same for the site config for Zelda. And we'll just say zelda.png. Cool. So now our site config is pulled in and we can say images site config about image. And this has to be back ticks. Take off that JPEG. So now inside images, pulling in there. Let's see if this works. NPM run dev. We got link and we got Zelda. Link, unexpected character. Interesting. So this is caused in my config because dev client is not set up to use PNGs. It's only set up to use JPEGs. Let's set up PNG as well. And when it recompiles, we reload and we have our Zelda image. All right. Site configs look good. Webpack dev looks good. We can even add a GIF here. You may get this warning, unexpected character again. This just means we need to add PNG and GIF to all of our configs, dev server and client, as well as prod server and prod client. So that's a quick update and it'll go back to normal. So now our markdown data, it's coming from the right place. In link, let's have our title be about link. And Zelda, we'll say about Zelda. We'll have our author be Zelda. And down here, we'll say, all right, just a slightly different bio so we can tell them apart. About Link and About Zelda, sweet. So you can see how it's all happening in the about, but because we're using dynamic requires in our props variable, we can pull all of this data in dynamically and just use one component, it's pretty cool. So what about hot module reloading? Does that still work? Well, let's go to our about CSS. Switch this to two. We can see in both places, it switched to two. So one compilation, two domains, scoped as you would imagine it. Let's bring that back. All right, this is pretty amazing. 
We now have two separate sites that could be on zelda.com and link.com in the real world. We've set this up locally to prove it, but you can see how using only the request object inside the static router, we're able to do real server-side rendering as well as client-side rendering using this little universal hack where location hostname matches request hostname. If you need the final code, get checkout domain scope final. All right, so we're not nearly done yet. We've got data coming in from both subsites. We're still missing a bunch of features, like theming with separate CSS files. We'll look at theming CSS in the next episode. See you there.